Video number two, we're looking at causes of anxiety, triggers to anxiety. And really, you know, this could be like a dissertation, a very, very long video, but I want you to utilize it in the most effective manner. So it's important for us to recognize that our triggers, our causes for anxiety can start all the way from the minute that we come out the womb, right? From the minute that we are born into this life. It could, it could be beyond that or past that point where we have a family history, you know, such as myself, I have a family history where my mom struggles with anxiety and depression. And then she has shared that, you know, that goes a little bit past beyond her with her parents and so forth. So if I rolled dice, I'm like, man, looks like I may have a little anxiety. And I do. It's something that I, I work, you know, every day diligently in my life, acknowledging that there's moments I'm on the kitchen table and I'm telling my wife and she's like, what's going on? And I'm like, I'm overwhelmed. And then she's like, oh, that's why you were restless last night. And I said, yeah. And it's a journey. It's a journey where we're trying to figure out what are our causes, what are our triggers of anxiety. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, so kind of going back to that example, I want you to think about your anxiety. I want you to think about what provokes it, what pushes its buttons. You know, are you a 12-year-old student and you sit in a class and then you find yourself anxious because um, you want to make a certain grade? Are you a 40-year-old adult and you notice that if you don't reach a certain level of success, that makes you feel stressed and overwhelmed? Um, and it makes you feel stressed and overwhelmed because you remember when you were a kid and your parents really pushed that onto you, that you have to meet a certain expectation, right? So what I'm sharing with you, I'm sharing upbringing our upbringing, environmental factors, some of these things, some of these variables have to do with why we feel so anxious. Um, another area to look at as far as um, our triggers, I'm looking down on my paper, is the pressure that you receive, uh, receive um, from your culture, from, from your microsystem. So let's say like uh, you have an individual and they are having upbringing from a culture that really pushes them uh, to reach a certain point in their life. Maybe they push them to be a professional because that individual um, came from a family system that migrated, right? So now this person has this thought, right, in their mind where, you know, my parents went through all of these things, so I have to reach a certain level. Now that in itself, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of stress. Now you and I know if we use those words, pressure and stress, at times they're not the best words because they can lead to a body and mind reaction where the body gets anxious, heart rate goes up, the body starts to sweat, the mind starts to feel like uh, like sticking your hand in a fish tank and it's just cloudy, you can't see anything, right? So that again, there's, there's a trigger there for anxiety. Some people even notice that they get anxious when things are coming up or when they experience change. So it could be that you know, you're living in your home and all of a sudden you gotta move to a new one maybe landlord or whatever issue came up, that change in itself causes you to feel stressed. And then what takes place after that change is a whole flight of ideas or flight of thoughts. So an example of this would be if Bob had to move from his house and his landlord said, hey, listen, um, we are selling the house, so you can't live there anymore. And then Bob is like, oh, damn it. You know, what am I going to do? Where am I going to live? So then those thoughts in itself were triggered by the change, a change that was out of his control. Because it's different if Bob wants to do something that he's in control of. If he says, you know what, I am ready to move. I'm ready to move. Then that's completely different because he's in control of it. However, because he's not in control and there's uncertainty, that increases that anxiety. So then Bob starts to react. His stress gets triggered, right? It's a cause to it and it starts to react. And then what strengthens, yes, what strengthens that anxiety is the subsequent, you know, the next thoughts that come after. You know, Bob's sitting there thinking, he goes, you know, where am I going to live? I have nowhere to live. I have no saving. You know, I don't know anybody in this town or I don't want to move somewhere. Or if I live somewhere, I don't get along with my roommate. Or I don't get along with the landlord, right? All of those thoughts, yes, have a question to them, but they're also anxiety driven. And then when it comes to anxiety, a lot of clinicians, such as myself, will use the word, uh, the term, anxiety-driven thoughts. So realistically, what that means is you have a thought, and then it is driven, right? It is pushed, nudged by an, an, an anxiety, you know, a worry, just a very, you know, high-level worry. So, so far, let's kind of take a step back. So far in this video, we are talking about triggers. We're talking about what causes your anxiety. And each of us have an individual fingerprint, at least that's, that's what I'm told. I like to think about anxiety in that way, where your triggers may be very different than mine. You know, mine can be connected to my upbringing. Mine can be connected to my family history, right? That gene line. 
Think about yours. Think about what causes you to feel anxious. Uh, typically, if I were sitting down with somebody or doing, um, you know, just, just working with an individual, um, I would ask them to write that down. That way you have some sort of data in front of you and then you could play with it and work with it. Now, before we finish this video, I want to share with you all and you see it in the um, notes below, the description below from the video is I do have a course. Um, it's called Tame Your Anxiety uh, Without Medication. So if that's the avenue you want to go in, if you want to look at how can I manage my anxiety without medication, then you know I think it's a good fit for you. I want you to click that link, take a look at it, dive into it, see if it's a good fit. All right, next video, we are going to get into coping skills. All right.